Hello and welcome to Philip's Japanese Journal, a show dedicated to tracking my journey through a year of learning Japanese with video games. Uh, nothing really to report as far as like a big intro, but let's just go right into the goals. I'm recording this a bit later in the month, I think it's like the 25th, so this is, this is pretty late, but I wrote it beforehand, so I'm just now finally getting around to editing it and putting it up. So my goals for listening. Uh, podcast. Once again, it's quite easy to get all my listening done. I have a small commute to work that's around like 20-ish minutes, and I also walk my dog for nearly like 30 minutes a day. So that's guaranteed like 50 minutes of listening time each month. I did want to note that from what I've gathered from the Japanese learning community, there are different forms of listening. So I primarily practice passive listening, as in like just putting on a podcast and then continuing on with my day. This is quite a bit different from active listening, where the listener interacts with the audio as they listen. I found a few different methods of active listening, actually, and I want to share them with you guys. One popular method suggested by my friend of the pod, DEFCON, is transcription. You listen to Japanese audio and you write down what you hear. Unless you're probably already pretty advanced, you're probably just going to write the kana you hear, and then maybe go back and like write the kanji if you know it. Uh, if a podcast has a transcription available, you could compare your transcription against theirs and see how close you were. I feel like this would really help you build an ear for each sound, but I think I would prefer just to do listening flashcards instead. Another popular form of listening is shadowing. Shadowing is where you repeat after the speaker and try to mirror them. This also supposedly builds up your speaking skills too, as it helps you like mimic a native speaker. I don't really have an interest in speaking, uh, but I do shadow sometimes. Usually it's like a sentence that I feel I can like fully understand. I get kind of excited and I just repeat it out loud. It's silly, but fun, especially during like any anime I'm watching and they just have like a catchphrase or something they, they throw out there. Another form of listening practice I've seen is to keep a running note page and write down notes as you're listening. This is just that you're, you're writing as you go to show that you kind of understand what's happening. That like you write as you listen like you're taking notes in a class. This makes the listening more active and encourage you to listen like harder to get more information. I've not tried this and it sounds tiring, but people talk about doing this online. So for listening, my target was 50 minutes a day, and I easily hit that hitting like an average of 51 minutes a day. It's not that hard. Uh, my new goal is going to be 60 minutes a day, and I think I'm going to branch out from podcasts. I don't think I'm ready for audiobooks. But I've seen recommendations from others to rip audio from shows that you're watching or already watch and listen to them. So I think I'll try it with like Card Capture Sakura and see how it goes. Speaking of Card Capture Sakura, let's get into what I've been watching. This month I tried branching out to a lot of new shows and to see what I could comprehend. I tried a punch, and but the ones I watched the most were Card Capture Sakura, Vampire in the Garden, and My Happy Marriage. Card Capture Sakura I talked about last week. It's just Sailor Moon for little kids. It's cute, easy to understand. Another thing that is a little strange with the series is the magic creatures all have English names. And it feels strange because I think about like the spells in Harry Potter all have Latin roots. Like for example, uh, the spell Lumos is derived from the Latin word for lumen for light. In Sakura we have monsters with names like Shadow and Wind and Dark and spells like Dash and Fly. Uh, they're not like translated or anything. The, sp the first spell Sakura literally gets is Fly. Anyways, just kind of interesting. Next show, uh, Vampire in the Garden. I finished up this short series in less than a week. It's a Netflix exclusive action anime about a human girl living in a world full of vampires and humans. She befriends a vampire and the two run away to find a place where they can live in peace. Great show. I recommend it all the way through. Language-wise, the show is not that difficult. Most of the talking is centered around vampires, drinking blood, and music. Uh, this could actually be a good beginner show if you're looking for something simple around vampires that, you know, isn't aimed at children because there's, like, violence. And finally, My Happy Marriage. This is another Netflix anime based on a light novel series. It takes place in, like, the late 1800s Japan where there's magic and demons. Our protagonist is a lady in a noble family who was born without magic power. 
She's sent to live with a very handsome military man and becomes his bride. Uh, this one is interesting language-wise. I recently added this as a deck to JPDB, and I have 43% coverage for the vocab used. Uh, not very great, but I can still kind of track what's happening or just my way through it. The show might be a little too advanced for me, but I'm enjoying it so far, so I'm probably going to finish it out. For my goal of watching, it was 30 minutes a day, and that's not hard to beat. Uh, I don't really want to burn myself out, but I do want to push myself more. Uh, I have a lot more card capture soccer episodes to go, so I think I'm just going to go for it. My new goal is going to be 35 minutes a day of watching Japanese content. Uh, I finished the 30 minutes a day about a week early, so I'm hoping this will help me get through like the end of the month so that I'm able to keep watching every single day. Because it's hard to kind of push yourself to do more when you finish your goals like a week early. Next up, reading. So I tried reading about like eight different manga series this month, but the two that really stuck with me was Yatsuba and Teasing Master Takagi-san. Uh, Yatsuba is still good. If anyone doesn't know where to start, start with Yatsuba. I think I found the reason Yatsuba is so good. The author usually doesn't do like any thought bubbles or internal thoughts for any of the characters. Instead, there's a bigger focus on like the facial expressions and the characters explaining themselves. Uh, as a beginner, I feel like this gives me a chance to more focus on the dialogue they're actually using with each other and not really have to worry about what the characters may be thinking or why they are saying something a certain way. You can read it all on their faces. But teasing Master Takagi-san goes the other way on that pretty much. Uh, we get a lot of inner dialogue in this manga, uh, but mostly only from Nishikata, who hyper explains all his thoughts Death Note style, which I feel like is good because he, he goes and he explains and outlines everything he's about to happen, everything he's about to do, the reason he did everything up to that point. Uh, this is good because there's some things that just wouldn't make sense otherwise, and I guess I just might be out of touch with children's games. And this may make me sound old or outdated, but there's one game that I learned from Takagi-san that was a variation on rock, paper, scissors. It plays like a standard game, but after a match, the loser looks a direction and the winner tries to predict what direction the loser will choose. It turns out this is actually a popular children's game. Uh, my middle daughter came home one day from school and asked me if I knew about this rock, paper, scissors game her classmates were playing. It's the same game, except in her class they call it shadow boxing. And when the winner is predicting the direction that they will punch, they make it look like they punched the loser into looking that direction. I feel kind of silly going into such detail about rock, paper, scissors, but another variation comes up in Yatsuba. Uh, Yatsuba and her father are playing like rock, paper, scissors with a bowl and a newspaper. After a match, the loser must grab the bowl and put it on like a helmet while the winner grabs the newspaper to hit the loser in the head. Uh, I guess rock, paper, scissors might have some like cultural significance in Japan that I don't know about. Either way, it's weird that it kind of popped up twice in one month. My goal for reading was 18 minutes a day, and once again, it was really hard to hit this goal. I had to spend like 40 minutes a day near the end of the month to get my average up high enough, but I did it. Uh, I think I'm going to bump my goal up to 20 minutes a day. I recently gathered a bunch of reading material, and I'm really hoping to get into it. Uh, some of the titles I grabbed are Sinew... Uh, sweetness and Lighting, and Barakuman. And I hope they aren't too hard, but we'll see. And next up, Studying. Nothing really new to report in the study section. I'm still using JPDB, or the Jap Japanese database, Anki and Rinshu. Uh, my goal is an average of an hour and seven minutes each day. And I made it, but it was really hard. Uh, much like reading, I had to do a lot of catch-up to make this goal. This month was the closest I came to just burning out or giving up and just not hitting my goals. Uh, when I was about a week out, I saw that I needed to do almost two hours a day to catch up. I got really bummed out when I thought I wasn't going to make it, so then I just tried even harder to catch up and managed to do it. Uh, but with that experience in mind, I'm kind of scared to increase this too much. So I may have hit like a soft cap here, so I'm just going to play it safe. I'll increase my goal by a total of one minute to a total of an hour and eight minutes a day of study time. So that I can just tell myself that I'm pushing myself more uh, with all the other increases in the other categories, and I'm worried that things will get unmanageable at some point. I only have so much time in each day, so we'll stick with that. Alright, time for the big meat. The gaming. Trials of Mana. Trials of Mana was my fourth game to finish this year in Japanese. It took me 24 hours to complete this game. It's kind of funny to think that I spent a full day of my life 
playing a game in full Japanese. Uh, Trials of Mana is my longest played Japanese game at this point, and I 100% recommend it. I complained last month about the auto-advancing text, and if you don't mind missing a few things, you will enjoy the game. I would not recommend this as your first game, but it's not an impossibly hard playthrough by any means. Uh, a couple notes, there are no points in the game where I had to do any lookups to progress, but there's also no Furigana present in the game. The font is perfectly legible. If you want a 3D HD version of a classic action RPG, then Trials of Mana is for you. I think there's even a sequel coming out, or there's a addition to the Mana series. I don't remember what it's called, but I'm, I'm really excited to play that when it comes out. Next up, Resident Evil 2 Remake. Uh, this is my fifth game to complete this year after Trials of Mana. Uh, my goal is 12, of course, so I'm advancing quite well. It took me 19 hours to complete the game. But now for completion on this one, I played through Leon A's story and Claire A and Claire B. Uh, I didn't do Leon B. I guess it could be argued that I need to go back and do Leon B to get a full experience, but I don't think there's enough variance in the playthroughs for me personally. I did three playthroughs at this point. Maybe I'll go back one day for the last one, but that's enough for me. Uh, I'm a beginner in Japanese, but this game is not too hard. I don't think I can fully recommend this game to other beginners, but if you have like Game Pass, you can give it a shot. Once again, there's one brutal puzzle in this game that is a language-based logic puzzle, and that's the chess puzzle. I thought it was hard on the A playthrough, but the B playthrough, they remix it and make it even harder. The puzzle has a simple logic puzzle of placing chess pieces on switches. The player is then given a hint by a cryptic note that reads something like, the knight sits beside the queen and across from the rook. And you think it's easy because I know where the rook goes, so I can place the queen and the knight. But then you read on and it says something like, the original marking of the rook was placed on the wrong switch. So then you have to go and look at the switches and some of them do have like photos of pieces next to them. And you know that the rook switch is not actually the rook switch. So then you have to logically think about it. Now, this puzzle will be hard enough for me without a language barrier, but it had me struggling. So to understand, like, see the quit, the hint about the queen or the rook cannot be seen. I don't know. I, I couldn't understand it. It was too difficult to parse, so I had to look of a guy just to see what I was supposed to do. But that's the hardest part. The rest of the game is easy in comparison. And then just miscellaneous other games like Octopath Traveler 2 uh, is one of the titles I've been playing. I've been playing a bunch of other titles. Uh, Square had a publisher sale, and I picked about seven other games to try. Uh, some are games that I played before, others are new. The game I'm playing most, though, is Octopath Traveler 2. I was worried this game would be too hard, but it really isn't. It could be that I'm improving some, but the game is actually quite plain speaking and direct with its text. I'll just see how it shakes out after some more game time, but I'm 15 hours in, I think this could be a good beginner game. Um, my goal for gaming was an hour and 20 minutes and much like reading, I barely made it. Gaming is my main motivator for this year-long exercise. So even though it was close this month, I am going to increase my goal by 5 minutes again to an hour and 25 minutes a day. I think the biggest thing I can do for this goal is minimize doing anything in English. I'm at the point where I can enjoy Japanese in game or I can enjoy gaming in Japanese without too much struggle. The struggle isn't really about finding a game I want to play in Japanese. I have a massive list of games I already want to play. The issue actually stems from being able to play the games I want. I have multiple games on Switch that I was planning on playing in Japanese, but found out they don't support Japanese on the North American release of the cartridge. Or even worse, on the recently game I bought recent, uh, Final Fantasy IX on the Microsoft Store. In the store details, there's a chart outlining all the supported languages for the game. Japanese is marked as supported. After days of research, I discovered that the Japanese language option is only available on the Japanese digital version of the game. But since I purchased the game from a USA region Microsoft store, I received the version with the language specifically removed. I never thought that my biggest struggle in Japanese would be dealing with region locked games. Uh, I could just do all my gaming on my PC, but I feel like I never have time to sit down to do some PC gaming. So all my gaming is either done on my Switch, or on the go, or my Series X downstairs. It's kind of annoying. But that covers all my goals, and it is a lot. I feel like it's just getting to be a lot. Just a quick little confidence check, just to see how you know I'm feeling at this point. I'm feeling good uh, about my journey so far. Each month is harder than the last, 
This month definitely felt like it. Uh, my total average goal for the month was four hours and five minutes of Japanese every single day. Now, the, this increase next month is going to be four hours and 28 minutes average each day. And at this point, I think I need to like cut back on sleeping or something to hit these goals. Uh, in future months, my increases will need to be cut back significantly. Otherwise, I'm going to end up doing seven hours of Japanese a day. I do have other responsibilities outside of Japanese as a hobby. So I'm very happy with my progress, and the, but there will be a point I need to cut back. I keep hoping for my skills to hit a cliff where I could just keep improving through input alone. Um, maybe in the future, I'll just trim back on time I spend studying and slide that time into reading or gaming. Anyways, I think I've gone on long enough for this episode. I have another full month of Japanese learning to get to. So thanks for joining me this week. See ya. See ya.